Hi and welcome to this short video where we're going to look at how we run Bolt DIY using Docker. So the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, naturally install Docker. So if you just do a simple Google search for Docker desktop, you'll be greeted with the Docker homepage. And all you need to do is quite simple really. All you need to do is get started. Uh, you can download, once you've downloaded Docker, you can install it and once Docker is running on your machine, it's actually simple as that, but once Docker is running on your machine, next thing we're gonna do is just gonna visit bolt.diy. So when we visit bolt.diy, you can see that it has lots of documentation that is really useful, but I just wanna breathe some sense into what this documentation really means if you're just trying to run it using Docker. So we're not gonna be running the application from the download, we're gonna be running the application using Docker. So as mentioned before, you can make sure you've got Docker installed. Uh, once you've got Docker installed, you just head up to this section that says quick download. You just click here to download the files. So at the bottom of this page, you'll see that you've got two options. We're just gonna click the zip file. So once you click on that, it's going to begin the download. Excellent, so once you open, once you've downloaded the file, you can open it. Excellent, so once you've downloaded the file, you just open the zip file and extract all the contents of the zip file. Okay, so once it's downloaded, okay, so once you've extracted all your um, contents, all you need to do is just jump into the folder and we're gonna try and open up a terminal session by right clicking in the folder and choosing open in terminal. Okay, and what this will do is it'll open up a terminal session at that location. Okay, it's important that this terminal window is pointing to that location because the commands we are gonna run are gonna need to be at that location. And if you don't have this version of Windows or don't have terminal installed, you've got some options. If you press Windows and R and in the run dialog, just type CMD, hit enter, you'll be greeted with a new command prompt. Excellent, so all you need to do is copy the address from your current location of your exported folder. And we're just gonna use the command CD and paste that command right in there. Okay, just remove the um, last symbol. Now don't forget you can actually take this URL from the uh, Windows dialog and hit enter and then you'll find you're in the exact same location. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. Next thing we're gonna do is going to come back to the instructions and where we have the option for using Docker, yeah, we are just going to choose either one of these build Docker image scripts. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure Docker is running and I'm going to choose one of these scripts. Now, we have um, Node installed, so we're gonna use the top one of these scripts. So I'm just gonna select and hit copy Navigate to my terminal and paste that command in there and hit enter. And what you'll see is that Docker is now building our image. Okay, so once we have it downloaded, it will look a little something like this. Okay, so excellent. We'll head back to the repository and we'll see the last thing we need to do is actually just to run the container. Okay, now we can just copy this code into the terminal window that we've been working with, but I don't want us to have to keep looking for this code every time we wanna run our um, container. So we're gonna head over to Docker Desktop. Excellent, and if you've got lots of images like I do, all you need to do in the images section is use the search area and just type Bolt. Okay, and then you'll see the two images we've actually got access to. We've got the development and the latest. For our example, we'll just select the latest. Excellent, so the optional settings. So we do wanna edit some optional settings. We can choose a name if we want. Not really important. What is important is what we are doing here with the ports. We need to understand that the internal ports, which is 5173, this internal port is running within the container. And we need to access this port from the host port. 
which means the machine that's running the container. So all we need to do is just put in 5173 to say that this host port is going to be directly accessing the internal port from the container. Okay, hopefully that makes sense and it's not too complicated. We're just gonna hit run. And here we can see Bolt is running. There we go, well, now we've been given some IP addresses that we can use. Um, alternatively, you can just click the port setting at the very top. Then you will be greeted with a running version of bolt.diy. Um, now this is running inside of your container. Oop. If that happens, just press reload. I'm not sure why it does that the very first time. Other things we can do as well is we can set an API key. Um, so I've been using DeepSeek a lot. I do have a DeepSeek API, but the one I would recommend if you are wanting to have a play with different models is OpenRouter. So if you want to use OpenRouter, you're going to need to go to openrouter.com or if you press this handy shortcut, and it is relative to whichever model you are selecting, whichever service you're selecting. So I'm just going to show you how to use OpenRouter. So just click on Get API Key. It's going to open up at the exact location that you need in order to acquire your API key. Okay, so I've got my API key and I'm just going to paste it inside of there and validate it there. And you can see that it has accepted my API key. I can choose any model that features inside of uh, OpenRouter and it's fantastic because it has so many different models that we can choose from. So I'm just going to choose ChatGPT uh, 4.0 Mini, which is a really good value for what it has got in the tank. So uh, let's give it a test. So can you create a game of tic-tac-toe? Well, it's knots and crosses if you live in the UK. Uh, can you create a game of tic-tac-toe using JavaScript and HTML? Let's just give this a test to see if it's working. So you can see it's connected to the API service perfectly and it's creating our, our files. It's doing everything it needs to do. Okay, so as you can see, my game is now completed. It, uh, because I'm running the dark mode, you might not be able to see it, but um, yeah, tic-tac-toe, it looks like it works. Oh, I've got a problem. It's not outputting anything else. So I'm just gonna tell the uh, Bolt DIY. Uh, that it's not working. Need to work, it stops after uh, I click the first cell. In fact, I'm just going to reload it and give it another go. Give it a chance. Yeah, it's always crashing after I press the first one. So I'm just going to tell Bolt exactly that. See how this works. Let's fix the issue, the problem likely. Oh, lies in the, let's see. Oh, it's, uh, it's installing yet again another, another dependency. And it's doing it again, let's have a go, let's see. Okay, that looks like it has finished. Uh, or has it finished? Oh no, it's not finished. Let's just give it some more time. Oh, yes, it has finished. And it's running it for me. So let's see if it's fixed the error. Excellent. And. Oh, it didn't tell me when it actually won the game. Um, it doesn't tell me the game has been won or lost. And you change that.
okay it looks like it's uh, just about finished that update so let's see the um, the output hey game must have been won now it's asking me player zero wins excellent I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, do feel free to like the video and come back soon for another help video.